yeah, hybrid systems are a bit more complicated than um, standard ordinary differential equations. So it's um, important to first understand how you would differentiate actually ordinary differential equations. And the first important aspect is why do we actually want to do that? And so typically, if we want to solve some optimization task or some parameter inference task, maybe you want to calibrate our model to some data, then we, uh, well, if it's high dimensional, then we want to do gradient descent to solve these optimization problems. And to compute the gradient, well, we also need to differentiate through this differential equation system. And so an ordinary differential equation is defined as, as uh, this equation here, where we have a vector field f that de can depend on some parameters. Y is the state of the differential equation. And we have an initial condition at some initial time, t0. Then depending on our problem at hand, we encode this, the objective in form of a loss function, which might look like this. So where we have some instantaneous loss that depends on the state so on the solution of the state of this differential equation over time. And then we are in the end interested in computing the gradient respect to the parameters or respect to the initial condition. And typically the important questions that we first have to ask are how many parameters do we have that decides if we want, whether we want to use something like forward mode AD or reverse mode AD. And we need to consider the stability and the memory properties of, of our system. And there's not time to do a very careful introduction to sensitivity analysis for differential equations. But to give you like a rough picture of this, it's like the basically easiest way to do sensitivity analysis is to write all your differential equation solvers in, the, in a DSL that's fully compatible with automatic differentiation. And then you just call your AD package on your solver operations. That's typically hard to maintain though for like very complicated solvers. So not every step in the solver is um, immediately differentiable. And then you resort to some other things like continuous sensitivity methods. So continuous sensitivity methods, for example, here forward continuous, for, continuous forward sensitivity analysis arises when you just differentiate the previous differential equation. And then you can propagate the sensitivity of the state with respect to the parameter in lockstep to this primal solution of the, of the ODE. There's also an adjoint version for that problem which scales efficiently with respect to the number of parameters, where we very similarly get um, a set of differential equations, where lambda here is then the adjoint state. And the first thing that you might notice here is that in this kind of differential equation here for lambda, you see that there are these vector trans transpose Jacobian products, which is a typical sign that you do now something in reverse mode. And the slightly complicated part here is that this Second differential equation, you have to solve in reverse from a terminal condition. And, the, and in the, at the same time, these vector tr transpose Jacobian products depend on the state of your forward evolution. So you kind of need to recompute the state to compute this um, adjoint solution. And the third equation here gives you the gradient respect to the parameters. And you actually notice here in this equation that there is no lambda theta on the right hand side. So this can be also solved as just an integration problem. So if you ever wondered how these different continuous sensitivity methods in SIML arise, those are just different ways to solve these two problems, recomputing the state or solving this integration. And they have then different stability properties depending on how you do that, and also different um, memory usage kind of requirements. And in this talk, we basically discuss now the um, the extension to treat discontinuities that usually are implemented in, um, in terms of callbacks. Um, discontinuities, if you're not familiar with that, um, can arise from two different sorts of events. So first you have explicit events, which are sometimes also called discrete events, which depend only on time. So, uh, so ahead of solving your differential equation, you can basically compute all your event times, and then you just set stopping times in your solution, and then at these points, um, well, some, some event will be triggered. The slightly more general type of events are called implicit events, where the event condition depends not only on time, but also on the solution of your differential equation. And there's two small examples for like what can happen at these kind of um, condition functions. You could have, for example, a piecewise constant controller that's only updated at specific time points, 
or you can have, depending on some concentration in your system, some bursts that, that, that spikes. Um, the rough general idea of what you have to do in solving for your sensitivity equations is basically that for explicit events, it's rather easy to understand it. So because we know these kind of events times ahead of the solution, the, the problem decomposes into solving before the event time, then, uh, then solving through this kind of effect function that we apply, and then again solving for after the um, effect function. And what we do is then we update this adjoint solution where tau j minus here is the left limit to the event and the plus indicates the right limit to the event. And, it, and you see here that to compute these sensitivities exactly, you need to store the state before the event happens. So this kind of increases your memory usage, but you really need this to um, compute your gradients exactly. And for implicit events, it's a very similar story. So you just store the event location, you store states and parameters. But in addition to this update rule, you get another update rule that depends on the condition function. And that's because for implicit events, when you change the parameters, also the time at which the event is triggered will, will change. So you kind of get two contributions to um, the equations that you need to update. And well, this is all implemented now in SIML sensitivity, and we have like some examples for some toy problems, for example, these cell population models, where we have a very simple ordinary differential equation here, and we say that we inject some cells in this population at a very defined time in the beginning. Uh, we can write down the code, and you see here, and in the end we compute the sensitivity, so the derivative of this final state with respect to this parameter um, alpha. And yeah, so, so this is the, the forward evolution of this model. And we can check that this agrees with um, finite differences, forward mode ID, or also like discrete reverse mode um, applied on the solver operations. And one nice thing that landed this year is that we can also now use enzyme inside of these um, continuous adjoint methods, which highly improves like the performance. And just the, to show the second example very quickly, it's like we can just change the condition in, for the event time to be something that depends on the state. So we need these extra correction terms. Um, so the event is triggered here at, I don't know, 1.0. And still we can compute all gradients um, that we need to do, for example, some optimization. Yeah, this brings me to the end. So the gradient information is important for our optimization tasks. And yeah, in the future, we want to do more robust differentiation of generic callback types. Thanks.